I am at the airport in Bangkok, Thailand, about to board a flight to go to India. It's going to be my first time there and I will spend the next few weeks traveling around the country. And yeah, the plan for today is to hopefully arrive stress-free in one of the biggest cities in the world. And then we have to see how I can get to my hotel. I booked a really nice place and ultimately I want to try authentic and good Indian food later today. I haven't done much preparation in advance, so we have to figure out everything along the way. Join me and let's go to India. And I am treating myself today with a business class flight. I'm flying Air India business class and this is my first time flying with an Indian airline and only the second time of my life flying business class. So let's see how that experience is going to be like. And also I'm already late. It is already final call. And as you can see, nobody is here. Everyone bought it already. Hello, good morning. Okay, thank you. All right, well, I'm excited. I just had a coffee, so my energy is up now. Although it is early in the morning, it is 8 a.m. Oh, actually, it's convenient if you bought as one of the last persons and there's no queue here, nothing. But that was already a little bit of a stressful moment because I was hearing final call. Hello, good morning. And I always need to touch the plane when I enter. Hello. All right. Let's see what's the difference in the seats. It's orange juice? Yeah, orange juice. And apple? Ah, I take the apple one. Okay, thank you. Otherwise, we get a welcome drink, which you, of course, don't get in economy class. Whew. That was a bit of a stress now because I was sitting in the lounge. When you uh, fly business class, you, of course, also have access to the lounges. And I was sitting there and I was totally forgetting the time. There's breakfast and drinks and coffee and then suddenly I heard the announcement final call for my flight so we have a bit more leg space here than we do have in economy class but actually not that much for someone who is as tall as I am I'm one meter 90 but the seat is actually quite comfortable all right I just got a little menu here so this is going to be the breakfast so we have orange juice we have smoothie we have an entree and then different types of foods. I should get back to you once again. It's a lot included for it is. So let's sit back, relax, and the other Indian flight was already. And we are leaving quite exactly on time. And yet the expected flying time is four hours and 15 minutes. Okay, thank you very much. That looks good. The breakfast is served. I decided just to have a muesli. And then we also have a yogurt on the side, some fruits, and a croissant a water and I see strawberry jam here. Okay, so let's give it a try. I'm actually not that hungry because I already had breakfast, but yeah, something light should be fine. And yeah, of course, there's also unlimited drinks uh, included here, so I can order anything anytime I want, even alcoholic beverages. But uh, yeah, it is way too early to drink alcohol in my opinion. And if you know me, then you know I rarely drink alcohol anyway. And yeah, according to the menu, this is overnight yogurt soaked muesli served with fine diced fruits. It's sugar free. There's mango and cinnamon as well inside and some pieces of crunchy muesli. Oh, this is delicious actually. I'm a huge fan of overnight oats anyway. And yeah, the rest of the breakfast was okay. Nothing too special. The yogurt, the croissant, the fruits. But overall, it was a good breakfast though. And yeah, I'm not sure how the food looks like in economy class here, so I can't compare now. But overall, I would say this felt a bit better than the usual dishes you get in economy classes on regular flights. And yeah, the cabin here is separated from the rest of the plane. We only have 12 business class seats here. And by the way, this is not the same as a first class. So the first class is even above the business class, but this plane doesn't even have a first class. So this is the best seat that is available on this plane. And yeah, overall the seats are a bit bigger, a bit more comfy. And yeah, I can recline the seat here. So it is actually quite comfortable. And also the table here feels a bit bigger than the tables you usually have in economy class. But I have to say that I am a bit disappointed with the leg space that I have here. I think I actually have more leg space when I'm sitting in economy class at an exit seat. But yeah, this might just be a problem for me as a tall person. I am one meter 90. But yeah, overall, I am happy so far. Okay, quick little bathroom review. It is the exact same bathroom as in economy class. So not the biggest one, but uh, the difference here is that we have a special bathroom only for the business class, so it is used by way less people here. Okay, so and we have almost arrived, and yeah, overall, before I will tell you the price, overall, I have to say the experience inside the plane here was not that big of a difference compared to the economy class. Of course, the seat is a bit better, the service here, the service was great by the way, the staff is super friendly, they come around a few times asking if you want to have drinks or snacks and one of the staff members here even gave me some recommendations for my first days in India. But overall, 
like the experience was of course better than an economy class but not a huge difference for me but I have to say the experience that I had at the airport earlier was a big difference because when you have a business class ticket you can use fast tracks at the airport in Bangkok that means there's an extra fast track for immigration extra counter for immigration and also for security so that of course goes way faster than the usual immigration and security checks and of course you have access to the lounges where you have unlimited food and drinks and of course the atmosphere there is a bit nicer than just waiting at the regular gate and yeah how much did I pay for the flight so the original price that I paid for economy class was $300 and then two days before the flight I got an email from Air India offering me an upgrade to business class for an additional $200 so in total I paid $500 for the flight thank you very much thank you very much nice to meet you nice to meet you bye bye and we have arrived in Delhi, India. Let's see if the immigration process will be smooth and easy and then I'm super excited to get some first impressions here. And yeah, India is one of the few countries that I with a German passport actually do need a visa for. But the process to get the visa was quite easy and straightforward. You can just apply for it online on the website. You fill out some forms and I think then it took me 48 hours until I received the approved visa and the price I paid was 25 US dollar. But yeah, let's see how quick and easy I can actually enter using that visa. Okay, we have immigration over their arrivals and it looks like I have to fill out the form maybe. I'm wondering if I still have to do that although I have a visa already. Okay let me fill this out. Do we have pants here? Yes we do. Yeah this seems to be like a regular arrival card that you have in many other countries as well. Just your name, date of birth, passport number, flight number, something like that. Okay, I filled out the arrival card. I have my visa printed out as well so there shouldn't be any problems now. Here we have immigration. Let's see how long is the line. I think it's not too long actually. These are the counters on the left here, it looks okay. But yeah, I'm not allowed to film here, so see you on the other side. Oh, it's actually pretty organized here, so there's one zone for e-visa. So I just have to follow the color here on the floor. All right, and I am in the country. The immigration process took about 15 minutes, so easy going. And now I have to collect my bag and then I will tell you the next plans. But first let me figure out where is my bag. Maybe I'm lucky and it's just this one right here in front of the exit. Let's see. Oh, Bangkok. I am lucky. Let's see if I'm even luckier and my bag is already here. I think that's not the case. But it says delivery ended 12.24. That was two minutes ago. By the way, the time difference between India and Thailand, where I'm coming from, is one and a half hours. The flight took quite exactly four hours and 15 minutes. But yeah, because of the time difference, I actually lost less time than that. And here it is, my bag. All right. Okay, next step, I need cash. Let's find an ATM. Okay, and I found an ATM. Let's see if it's working, which usually is the case, but I also had it happen before that I'm arriving in a new country and then for some reason, uh, the card is not working or the ATM is not working. How much do I need now? It's hard to tell when you have no idea really about the prices in a new country. So the currency here is Indian rupee and about 90 rupee equals to one US dollar. The sound of the money. Okay, I've never seen Indian money before to be honest. Looks like this. Pretty colorful actually, I like that. So this for example is 200 rupee here, which here yeah, should be around two dollar. So it's easier on the head if you calculate 100 rupee to one dollar that makes it easier although that is not 100% correct and yeah usually the next step is to get a sim card and check it out how busy this sim card shop is here and this is the only sim card shop I see around here and also I heard that it can be quite difficult as a foreigner to get a sim card in India so usually you arrive after a long flight and you're tired and then getting a sim card can always be stressful and a big hassle especially if I see the amount of people there now so I would definitely not be keen to wait there now and yeah the reason why I don't have to get a sim card now is because I started to to use eSIMs and an eSIM is basically a digital SIM card that you can install to your phone even before you start the journey. So I got the eSIM already yesterday, installed everything on my phone and then I was able to connect my phone with the internet right after the landing. So while I was still sitting in the plane I was already connected to the internet and that is really really a game changer for me. So no more wasting time getting a local SIM cards in the countries and also the local SIM cards that you get at the airports are usually way overpriced. And yeah I'm getting my eSIMs on an app called Nomad and it works pretty easy you just choose the country in the app they have over 170 countries available then you choose a data plan and then the app tells you step by step how to install everything it's super easy and convenient you can literally have everything done in like two minutes saves you a lot of time hassle-free easy and convenient do everything before you even travel and if you would like to check out Nomad the app that I am using as well there's a link in the description and if you enter the promo code that you can see on the screen right now you can save three dollars 
of your first purchase. So feel free to check it out, save some time and use the promo code to get $3 off. Just make sure that your phone actually does support eSIMs, but most phones nowadays do. Okay, so what's the plan now? As soon as I step out of this door, I am in Delhi. And from what I've heard is that it can be quite chaotic out there. I've heard that, yeah, as soon as you leave the door, there will be tuk-tuk drivers swarming around you. So it can be quite stressful, so let's make a plan first. So I already checked on Uber, so they are using Uber here as a taxi hailing app, not Grab like in Southeast Asia. So I could take an Uber, which is 400 rupees to my hotel. My hotel actually isn't that far away, I'm staying near the airport. And yeah, the plan is now getting to my hotel, which I'm really looking forward to. It's a really nice hotel, I think. And then I'm really looking forward to try authentic Indian food. So I would say, let's just go out here, feel the air of India, get some impressions. Is it chaotic? Are taxi drivers attacking me? Oh, so far, no. So far, no, I have to say. Taxi? Ah, no, thank you. Where are you going? I'm going to the metro. Where are you going? I'm going to Aero City. Aero City Metro? Yeah. Which hotel? Uh, Aloft. Aloft, so destination is about maybe like Aero City, 800 meters in the parking. Yeah, so I take the metro and then... And then after I go in a 800 meter something in the... Yes. Hello. Tuk Tuk as well? No Tuk Tuk, no, not as well. You take a taxi, go there, here. So. No, I take the metro. No problem, there, go there, metro inside. Metro is over there? Yes, yes. Okay, thank you much. Thank you. Oh, he actually seemed to be quite helpful. So, I saw the sign metro. So I think I can just take the metro, which uh, should be only one station to where I want to go. But to be honest, the first impressions here are quite nice. I was expecting worse. Because I, I heard so many stories from people arriving here and it's chaotic, it's loud, it's noisy. But overall, the, the whole experience arriving here at the airport, super smooth and easy, well organized, no chaos here. There was even a sign that I saw inside the airport saying something like, uh, voted the best airport for the fifth year in a row. I'm not sure if that means the best airport in uh, India or in Asia or in the world. But uh, I think I can agree to that. The whole process here was, yeah, not this typical stereotype thing that you have about India in mind. Everything is chaotic, loud and noisy. Not at all. So the first impressions here are very different from what I would have expected, but very nice. So we have a sign here, Metro. Let's take the Delhi Metro for the first time, which I guess will be like a special airport, express metro or something like that. Also, I have to say, I like the temperature here. It's 28 degrees here, which is a bit colder than Southeast Asia. I actually spent the past weeks in Jakarta, Indonesia to take a break. And there it was, yeah, very hot, raining a lot, high humidity. And the first impression here is that the temperature and the air feels actually quite nice. But it's funny, right, that you have the stereotype about India in mind, that everything is chaotic and unorganized. I don't even know why really I had this stereotype in mind. That is just such a, it's actually quite negative. I, I don't like to, to travel to a new country with like negative stereotypes in my mind. I'm always curious to see things with my own eyes. And as we see, it once again proves to be uh, good to get your own impressions. But well, let's not speak too soon. Maybe my impressions will change later. But the first impressions are quite good. So what do we have here? That's, these are flights, not metro lines. Uh, I think I have to go down first and then probably I can get a ticket somewhere down there. Yeah, I had similar experiences recently in China. You know, China is also a country that uh, yeah, has a lot of negative uh, stereotypes when you think about China. The Western media reports a lot of negative things about China and I think it could be similar here in India. Also, the, the Western media is not always reporting great things about India. So I'm very curious to get my own impressions now. And yeah, I will stay here for a few weeks, traveling to a few different places. So if you're new here, feel free to subscribe to the channel to join the journey. Welcome to New Delhi, home of the fastest metro in India. That sounds promising. Okay, so we do have a map here. So the metro system seems to be quite large here, connecting all the areas of the city. So I'm sure this is not the only time I will be using the metro here in Delhi. So I think I will just go to the ticket office over here and tell my destination and then it should be fine. Only digital payments. No cash here. Okay, we are confused because there's a sign saying that there's only mobile payment accepted. So it looks like they also have some apps here in India that they use for mobile payments. But we also have a ticket vending machine here. Can I pay with cash here? I don't think so. But I can pay with credit card here. Oh, please insert banknotes. Okay, I can pay cash here. Okay, English. No, this, I think this is a card that I need to top up. Okay, this is uh, not as easy as I would have thought. So this is not an option to buy tickets. I can't click it here. QR ticket. I can only recharge. 
Okay, let me figure this out. Must be possible to get a ticket here with cash. There's customer care here. Hello. How can I buy a ticket with cash? Yeah. Can I buy here? Yeah. I want to go to Aero City. 200 rupees. 200 rupees. Only one person. Okay, thank you much. Thank you. Actually, the ticket is just a small piece of paper here. Okay, but how do I uh, scan? Oh, okay. Okay, is it going? Oh, I should have asked which platform. Uh, well, excuse me. Which platform to Aero City? No, platform number three. Number three? It's okay, I can take the stairs. <laughs> ah, he was pointing me to a... Uh, 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 way over there where I can go down by using the, the how do you call it? I forgot the name. The, the moving stairs. Ah, I forgot the name. <laughs> Morning. Do I still need the ticket to leave the, the station later? Maybe I need to be more careful with the ticket. Okay, we have airport and then Delhi Aero City. That's where I'm going. All right. I think I don't need a seat because I'm only going for one station. But. It actually looks quite nice here. The seats are looking good. Everything looks clean and decent, comfortable. And we have the aircon here, but not too cold. Sometimes the, the trains around uh, Southeast Asia, especially, they blast the aircon so much that it's actually too cold in there. But here it seems to be perfect temperature. Alright, that was literally a three minute ride. Very easy. And here, once again, I have to use the stairs. Now, probably uh, this time I'm going to search for the way because this is uh, quite heavy so we have elevators here and I'm looking for an escalator now I remember the word escalators and then here my hotel is only 800 meters away from the metro station so in theory I could walk it would be like a 10 minute walk but I think there will also be tuk-tuks although the taxi driver earlier told me that there will be no tuk-tuks tuk-tuk as well no tuk -tuk, no anybody but I think he only said that to uh, get me into his taxi so let's see if there are tuk-tuks available here Oh, I guess I need the ticket. Uh, where is this little piece of paper now? Uh, I can't find it. <laughs> where is this little piece of paper? Not working? Oh, okay. Thank you. Oh. Okay, so if you're arriving here, make sure you don't lose this little piece of paper. But overall, a good first impression of the metro here. And now I don't need this anymore. And guess what? I see tuk-tuks already over there. Of course, there are tuk-tuks here. So let's see how much they charge me for probably a two-minute ride. Hello, sir. Which one? You or you? Which one I choose? <laughs> I want to go to Hotel A-Loft. 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 Uh, Kitna Rupee? 100 Rupees. 100 Rupees? Yes. Is that a normal price? Yes, yes. Okay. Obviously, I have no idea. You tell me in the comments. With you? Yeah. Not with him? Oh, he's driving away now. Okay, it's not far, right? Two minutes? Yeah. I think two minutes two only. Three. Two or three, okay. So it should be literally just around the corner over there. The bag can fit inside? Yes. Okay, I take this one. I'm wondering where will he put it? Oh, just on the, okay. Just on the back seat together with me. So let me hop on this side. Okay, works. Wouldn't work if you are two or three persons now. But I'm traveling alone this time, so no problem. Okay, my first tuk tuk ride in India. And actually, these tuk tuks are the same that I uh, saw before in Sri Lanka and also in Indonesia, they have very similar ones. But these ones here are yellow and green, which I have seen in many India videos before. Oh, I'm very excited. First time being yes. in India. Oh, bless you. So this area here is like a, like a modern hub right next to the airport. It's like 20, 30 minutes away from the actual city center. But don't worry, we will explore the city center of Delhi and probably in one of the next videos. But I thought for a smooth arrival, it would make sense to stay near the airport. And from what I've heard is that this area is actually quite convenient and nice. And you can see the first impressions here are pretty good. Yeah, also here, no chaos, everything looks clean and decent. And we have a couple of uh, good hotels here. So over there we have the Holiday Inn, I think. We have Ibis Hotel here. And then my hotel should be one of the next ones. Okay, we're going to check in now. I will show you my room and then we go hunt for some food, authentic Indian food. Oh, that was easy, two minutes. Yes. Oh, very easy. 
Okay, thank you. All right, and let's see what you can get for $100 a night here in Delhi, India. Check in here. Okay, thank you. All right, I'm walking through here. They seem to have a lot of security here. Very difficult to enter here with a car. Oh, guys, I'm feeling good. I'm so happy to be here. India has been on my list for a long time. It is obviously a very big and interesting country. Oh, hello, namaste. Oh, thank you very much. Okay, looks like security check again. Walk through. Ah, oh, the back. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right. Namaste. Welcome to our house, Mr. Daniel. How may I help you? Uh, I would like to check in. Please. The reservation of what name? My name is Ken. Ken. Yeah. May I request your passport? Sure. Thank you. Welcome to India. Thank you very much. The booking for the non-smoking king size bed. The breakfast is part of the package. It will be served on the same floor, straight on the right. Timing would be 6:30 to 10:30 in the oh, morning. Oh, you so, speak so fast. You say this uh, many times every day, right? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I used to work in a hotel before as well. So I know, like, you repeat the same sentences every day, <laughs> countless of times. Why is it that expensive five-star hotels always have dark hallways? I notice that every time I'm staying in such a hotel. Okay, thank you very much. Welcome. That uh, looks nice. I'm giving you just a little bit of information. Food menu right there, 24-7 mm -hmm. available. Yeah. We have tea, coffee, and water bottle complimentary. Any need you have, calling on and dancing. Perfect. Thank you very much. Shukriya. Thanks for your help. Shukriya. 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 Thank you. Okay, I'm a bit confused about uh, Danyavat and Shukriya. If you're from India, please help me out in the comments. Uh, can I say Shukriya or can I say Danyavat? Because I think both words mean thank you. So what is the difference and when to use which word? Anyway, let me show you the room and I think I'm very happy with this. Wow, first impressions here, great. So we have an open area bathroom, which I actually like. So it's not like a closed uh, room here. But then, yeah, you can close the bathroom here. So the toilet, we have the shower here, which looks quite okay. Shower head looks like this. Everything is clean and decent, which of course you expect when you pay $100 a night. And then we have the room looking like this. Two desks actually, so that is nice because I am going to release this India series almost in real time. So you can follow my journey almost in real time. So the first video will be already up in the next days. So I will be sitting here editing this video. And then we have a bed, or oh, what is this? I think this is just the backside of the shower. So let me actually test the, the chair. Oh yeah, this is nice. So I will be sitting here maybe later today already actually to edit this video. So you can see it as soon as possible. We have a TV here, and then let's see if there's a view. Oh, there's a balcony. How can I access the balcony? There's a balcony in front of my room, but no door to uh, access the balcony. That is interesting. And yeah, then we have a kettle here. We have water here. Everything fine. Quick bed test. Oh my God. Oh, oh the bed is super soft. Oh, this is nice. Wow, okay, I'm happy with my first hotel in India. But yeah, let's go out and get authentic and good Indian food. Let's go. All right, and I am on the way to, there's like a mall over there where I think I can find some food. And yeah, this area is called Aero City in Delhi. So we are basically right next to the airport. And this is a little area here that I think mainly consists of hotels and malls. So we have the Ibis Hotel here, for example. And I thought this is the perfect place to smoothly start my journey into India. Because yeah, when you think of Delhi, you think of chaos, chaotic areas, busy streets. But this is definitely not the Delhi that you think of, right? So Delhi also has areas like this. And I think this is not the only area in Delhi that looks like this, where everything is organized and clean and decent. If you are from Delhi and you know other areas, feel free to give me some recommendations in the comments. Because yeah, my goal is it to not only show the stereotype chaotic areas, although we will do check them out as well in one of the next videos, because for me personally, it's just interesting to go there. But wow, have a look at this. This looks nice here, right? Wow, yeah, I'm getting a lot of unexpected impressions today here already. And yeah, Delhi, by the way, is one of the biggest cities in the world. Over 32 million people are living here. And that also makes it, yeah, the biggest city I have ever been to. A few months ago, I have been to Shanghai. 
which I think has 25 million people. And by the time I was there, that was the biggest city I've ever visited. But now Delhi takes over the number one spot of the most populated city I've been to. Okay, so we have a building called Worldmark here, which maybe is a mall. And then we have Worldmark 2 and this is probably Worldmark 3. Can I find restaurants in here? Yeah? Thank you. All right, so we do have restaurants here and looks like I need to go through security. Okay, so we can go downstairs here. The security guy told me that there's a food court. So we have luxury brand stores here. And then I think this is a decent looking food court. Well, I'm very excited to try my first proper authentic Indian food. The Indian food is obviously world famous. I think every country that I visited so far had Indian restaurants. And also in Germany where I am from, you can find lots of Indian restaurants. And I think this is cricket up there, which I think is, I don't know. Is this cricket? Yes. It's the number one sport here, right? Sorry? This is the number one sport in India? Yes. So you don't watch football, you watch cricket, right? Yes. Okay, oh, check it out. I think there's a lot of uh, smoke here in the air. Maybe coming from one of the places here. Street food. Asia 7, Subway even, Pizza Hut, Momos. Oh, Momos, that reminds me of my time in Nepal. And yeah, this looks like proper, decent restaurants. And yeah, I have been told, so I have many friends who have been to India already. And everyone told me, be careful with the food in India. It can make your stomach sick as a foreigner who is not used to yeah, the spices and everything that they use here. So I am cautioned about that. So people recommended me to start with proper restaurants and then slowly yeah, also try to eat street food later on, which I'm definitely curious about. The inventors of butter chicken and dal makhani. This one, I don't know what it is, but butter chicken is obviously a famous Indian dish. Do you have a table for one? Yes, sir. This is my first time trying food in India. Okay, where are you from? I'm from Germany. All right, most welcome. Okay, all right, very busy restaurant. Thank you. That is a good uh, sign, I think. Thank you very much. Is there anything that you can recommend that is very good here? Yes, we have invented dal makhani butter chicken, sir. What is dal makhani? Dal makhani is black lentils. Black lentils? The original 1974 butter chicken. That sounds like I need to try that. So this is famous here? Yes, yes. Okay, now I take this one. Okay, looks like we actually stumbled up on a famous restaurant here because it says by the inventors of butter chicken and dal makhani. And yeah, butter chicken, as far as I know, is a typical dish here in North India. So it's a North Indian dish. And it is probably one of the most famous Indian dishes that you can find also when you go abroad, so outside of India. So I ordered with the original 1974 butter chicken with original recipe of Kundan Lal Jagi, prepared with hand crushed vine ripe tomatoes, bit of butter, and over the bone tandoori chicken and you can even see the differences here the original 1974 butter chicken and then today's butter chicken and the differences are the original butter chicken is served on the bone no cream and only fresh butter used coarse gravy and thick in texture whereas today's butter chicken is smooth boneless and has a modern creamy version okay so that sounds interesting and i am very hungry the last meal on the flight was already a few hours ago okay and the drink that i ordered with is lassi which is a drink that i actually tried before when i was in sri lanka i'm not sure how similar it's going to be here oh, thank you very much but yeah this is uh yeah one of the few indian drinks that i know i think it's basically a yogurt drink and then this is a mango taste so let's give it a try yeah, there's definitely a yogurt flavor to it. It's quite sweet and a very thick consistency, which I really like. Oh, this is delicious. Mm. Oh, I need to learn how to say delicious here in Hindi. You know, I can put it some butter chicken, sir. Okay. Oh, it smells delicious already. It's the garlic naan, sir. That's the garlic naan? Yeah. Okay, the first good impression here, I was expecting a very long waiting time because the restaurant is super busy, but it was now like maybe around 12 minutes, so definitely okay. And wow, I wish you could smell what I'm smelling. It smells so delicious here. And yeah, we have the naan bread on the side, the garlic naan in this case. And naan is something that I'm familiar with. I spend a lot of time in my life in Malaysia, and in Malaysia you also have a lot of Indian influences, a lot of Indian people living in Malaysia, so you find many Indian restaurants. Oh yeah, it's fluffy, it smells delicious. It's warm, almost too hot to eat. Oh, let me just try it plain first. 
I think it's a bit crispier than the naan I tried before in Malaysia. But wow, this is delicious. There's a very strong garlic flavor to it, which is nice. But now I think I'm going to dip it in here. And that will probably make it even better. Oh, the flavor of the butter chicken is amazing already. And yeah, as far as I know, the Indian cuisine can also be quite spicy. And if you know my channel already, you know I'm not the best when it comes to eating spicy food. My stomach can't really handle spicy food. So I don't think that this dish is actually going to be spicy. Oh, the chicken looks juicy. Cover it with the, with the sauce. Oh, I'm so excited to try this. Mm, the chicken is so soft. I can literally cut it easily with my tongue. Flavors are so delicious. It's like an explosion of flavors in my mouth. Oh, wow. And also, I feel already, this is a heavy dish. Probably has a lot of calories. Oh, but wow, this is, this is worth it. This is delicious. I think this is a really good start into the cuisines of India. And of course, I'm going to try lots of more Indian food in the next videos. Uh, what is this? Mouth fresh. Ah, mouth fresh. Like I, I mix it in my hand and then I eat it? Ah, okay. Ah, okay. And then there's a sugar. And now I just eat it? Oh, okay, interesting. Chew it? And I can swallow it? Yeah. Okay, so the total price is 1,122 rupees, which I think is going to be an expensive price for Indian standards, but yeah, you see the place here. Yeah, I think this is a famous place, so that probably raises the price a bit. And also, if you're from India, especially if you're from North India, please let me know many more dishes in the comments that I need to try while I'm here. All right, so that was my first meal in India. And yeah, definitely not my last meal, obviously. And by the way, guys, if you're on Instagram, feel free to also follow me on Instagram. Same name there, Ken Abroad. I'm posting daily stories, live updates. You can always see my live location, so feel free to follow me there as well. Okay, and we have to exit through this gate here. Uh, to be honest, my first impression, uh, the security seems to be tough around here. Like at my hotel, there was a lot of security. The area here has a lot of security, like security checks to enter the buildings. So that seems to be uh, normal here. I'm not sure if it's only in this area or this is, or if it's in India in general like that. But yeah, this is a very decent and nice area. So I'm having really good first impressions here of Delhi in India. And yeah, my plan is to stay in Delhi for a few days and then I will also visit other places in India. So in total, I'm going to stay for a few weeks. And then tomorrow is actually Holy Festival, which I'm really, really excited to experience here. And yeah, by the time you see this video, my Holy video will be already online because I will put up that one first. So if you haven't seen that one yet, you can check it out right here. Stay healthy, stay positive, and then see you on the next video from India. Ciao, guys.